Okay, hello there, and welcome back to Mega Man X1. Uh, my name is Eric, I call myself Demon Alchemist, and it's... It's been quite a while. I made part one, uh, two years and eight months ago now. Uh, I, I've, like a lot of people, I've had a lot going on, I've been very distracted, but I'm back now. Uh, and... Although well, last time we did fight all eight Mavericks, there's a thing that I mentioned twice uh, and never actually showed. So I'm gonna do that first, which is why we're here on a mostly fresh save file because it is in Flame Mammoth stage. If I can remember how to enter a, f a file. Or enter a level, that is. I am significantly less practiced than I was last time. Uh... When I made part one, I had played every Mega Man X game, the Seven Command Mission, at least two to three times. But now, it's been nearly a year since I last played. <laughs> uh, but as far as the glitch goes, um, you basically just wait for one of the big dragon heads, which are the heads of the Ouroboros mini-bosses from Launch Octopus' stage. You wait for one of them to fall, get on top, quickly jump up, and wall jump off the little ledge there. And then you can get up top here, where you're not meant to be. And then, um, you get up here. Just keep going, careful not to fall down. And then you can go past this part. Um, for whatever reason, the light capsule actually doesn't spawn. It should be there, I haven't gotten it in this file. But it's not. And if you keep going forward, then <laughs> the sub-tank is there. But I guess the game doesn't have it sprite loaded, so it's freaking out. Uh, I've heard an explanation of this is basically, um... Uh... The, the second half, like the second half and first half of the stage have different sprite sets. And by going above there, you bypass the game switching between the two. And so it's still using the sprite set from the first half on the second half, which is where the background is the wrong color and the sub-tank looks fucking wild. Uh, <laughs> and it might look even weirder on the recording, or it might be kind of hard to see. I'm gonna sit here for a bit, so hopefully you can get a decent look at it, even with the flickering stuff that uh, recording tends to do. Uh, but you can get down here. There's no wall on this side. Uh, on the other side, there is a wall that you have to make your way up. You can't actually get up there from here, uh, as far as I know. But it's easy to come down from there. And uh, even breaking the blocks has the wrong sprite load. It's little, uh, little blue little bricks rather than normal sprite. Uh, you can collect the sub-tank just fine. It's, it, it acts normally. But there's another change here. And that is that it, the area down there is not loaded. Uh, I think it's because the area below the level to the left, at the beginning part, uh, is a void. And so because you skip the switch, uh, there's a death plane there. So if you fall down, you will die. And I've never actually done it, but I believe it is possible to jump over from here and get to the other side. Ah, oh, so close. Uh, I have never done that. I'm not 100% sure it's possible, but I think it is. But this is the glitch that I mentioned but then forgot to actually show in episode one. So there's that. But even just getting to this point on a new file was a bit of an adventure because uh, if there's anything to let you know how inexperienced I am right now, it's the fact that getting to this point, I died to Chill Penguin. So um, uh, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut to the actual save file that was in part one, but <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show that clip of me dying to Chill Penguin here, so uh, enjoy that. Ooh. I'm gonna have to cut this apart. Because I realize I still need to get... Oh. 
I died on Chill Penguin. Okay, we're back. Uh, <laughs> so that was uh, obviously great performance on my part in that fight. To totally great. But so we're back and finally ready to start uh, the first Sigma stage. Okay. Uh, Zero goes on ahead, and we're backing him up. But basically, uh, since I didn't actually, like, fully explain the Hadouken last time, uh, well, I guess I kind of did, but whatever. It's kind of hard to pull off, and it only works if you have full health. That's the big downside to it, is if you get hit once, then you can't use it. Uh... So you gotta be careful. It's a really powerful weapon, uh, but that's a serious drawback, and I always get hit on this dude here. So that's usually where I lose access to it at the beginning of this battle. Uh, you can use uh, sub tanks to restore your health to get another use of it. Like, uh, rather, uh, if you lose some health, you can use sub tanks to get back to full so that you can use it. But that's a pretty big waste of a sub tank unless you're like about to die anyway, or Actually, interestingly, a sub tank is not enough to fully fill up your health. If you're near zero, then using it will only get you most of the way to full. Uh, but for this part, I recommend using uh, a charged rolling shield uh, because there are some airborne enemies here that are very likely to knock you off these platforms. Uh, this is actually, I think, pretty, pretty tricky without the shield. But because they die in one hit, the shield doesn't go away, and it'll last as long as it takes you to get through this, as long as you don't fall off uh, from just messing up the platforming, which is also pretty easy to do. Uh, especially for me, when I have uh, so little practice right now. Uh, and speaking of, just... Um... Oh, so close. Uh, speaking of, just getting... Uh, the Hadoken again, because it doesn't save with passwords, so I had to get it again. I died several times. So even, like, even if you don't count the intentional deaths to get the Hadoken, uh, there you go. Perfect demonstration. Even if you don't count that, still not a death free run, which is fine. I guess that takes some of the pressure off, because uh, I'm definitely not going to do as well as I did last time. Uh, I, did, I did quite well last time. Not, like, the best I've ever done or anything, but pretty good. I was, I was happy with my, uh, the skill that I showed there. Uh, but like I said earlier, I, I haven't played Mega Man X. I said, like, almost a year, but I think it's actually been more than two full years since I played all the way through this game. So, like, I am very out of practice. More so than I've been in years, actually, because usually I play this game more often than that. But I've been playing tons of different games. Here we are, back to this part. Um, but so, after the eight uh, Maverick stages in every Mega Man X game, there are four uh, Sigma stages, or similar stages. Uh, Mega Man X 3 has the Doppler stages. Uh, X2 has the X-Hunter stages. There's always some equivalent. Uh, I'm really struggling here, so I might be a bit quieter while I try this. Oh, my biggest issue is I'm actually, like, struggling to dash jump, uh, which is weird. Uh, but uh, I hadn't mentioned yet, but... Uh, after I finish this game, I am going to move straight on to Mega Man X2. Uh, and at least for a bit now, I'm just going to be going through uh, the Mega Man X series. I love the series. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I love every individual game in the series, but uh, we'll get to that. Uh... I don't think my opinions are necessarily, like, don't necessarily line up with the most popular opinions of each of the games. There are some that I like more than others, 
Uh, but I was getting a bit ahead of myself. Vile shows up. He and Zero facing off. Zero says he'll take him on. So I guess we'll leave it to him. I love this. Uh, as you enter here... It's so cool, you can hear their fight going on in the next room. Uh, that's so cool. Ooh, quiet. Zero actually lost a vial, it's crazy. Uh, if I remember correctly, his weakness is the rolling shield. But like his first fight, uh, this one is basically a guaranteed loss. Not to spoil or anything, but uh, he, since he doesn't have a health bar, he, he can't be beaten. That's sort of the tell for that. Uh, it's still possible to die, but it's not possible to kill him. So usually what I do is I just tank the hits, which does take longer when you've gotten all the upgrades, including the body parts and all the heart tanks, as I have. The Zero breaks free and grabs on a vial from behind. Charges up and blows himself up. Crazy. I'm I'm really used to the story, but it is it is it is really interesting. It's just, it's a it's a good approach. The whole game kind of builds up Zero as this incredibly badass figure. Okay, and then and then sort of like cuts it off here, and that's cool. But basically, right here, I'm gonna try to use the Hadouken on him. I might get hit. I, I make no promises that I'll like really show off how good the Hadouken is, if you're good, but I'll try. I'll try to use it whenever I can against bosses, but it can be tricky to actually pull it off. Yeah! There we go! Got him with that. And yeah, because it does 32 damage, like I said in part one, uh, it will one-shot any boss that it can be affected by it. Uh, and I can only think of one boss that I know is immune to it, but there might be one or two others. But here's Zero dying with some blood, which is not necessarily that crazy for a Super Nintendo game, but still, I'm sure a lot of kids felt more serious than they were expecting. And Zero's death here is kind of crazy, actually. Especially for the Mega Man series, because... Uh, none of the main characters ever die in the classic series, but there's Zero. Now, of course, I immediately get hit after the fight, but I did beat him with the Hadouken, so I'm pretty proud of that. Uh, maybe my performance won't be too bad, uh, but we got the lasers uh, and the little weird robot things from Boomer Kuanger's stage. Uh, and here is one of the hardest parts of a Buster only run, uh, which I still haven't completed myself, but uh, my advice for this part is charge up the Chameleon Sting and just skip it all. It's really useful. Uh, but usually you can't get through the whole thing, so charge another one, and then go. Alternatively, you can do that first part and then switch, but since I don't have full health, I can't use Hadoken against this boss. But, you might notice there's a door there. And that's because it's a refight! We're fighting Boomer Kawanger. Uh, unlike most Mega Man games, uh, the boss refights in this game, they are there, as is typical. But, like Mega Man 1, and unlike almost all the rest, uh, they're not in their own sort of secluded room with teleports. Instead, they're interspersed throughout uh, the Sigma stages. Like I said, like Mega Man 1. Mega Man 1 does that too. And like Mega Man 1, they're not really evenly spread. Uh, but I think I'm gonna switch to the... Storm Tornado. I actually forgot the name for a second. My favorite weapon in the game. 
because uh, it is as useful as ever in this stage. Uh, I love the background. Uh, there's a part of Mega Man X2 that has, I think it's the exact same uh, background column looking thing. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, this game is very pretty. And yeah, the first, this is the boss of this stage. So this level only had one refight. Which, when there's eight to get out of the way, is kind of crazy. There's only one in the first fight. But here's the boss of Sigma Stage 1. It's called... I'm not exactly sure how it's meant to be pronounced. Um, it's spelled Bow Spider in this game. In the PSP remake, it's spelled Boss Spider with two S's. It basically follows this kind of puzzle pattern. I don't actually know what this kind of thing is called. Uh, but, like, there's a minigame in Mario Party 1 that's like this. Kind of thing in these kind of games. And you just sort of keep an eye out for where he'll go as he crosses the paths. I like to use Storm Tornado to kill his babies. Oh, it's really easy to miss a hit, though, because his eye, his back eye, only stays up for a few seconds. Uh, and if you're at a distance, then it takes longer for your shot to hit for to get to him, obviously, so... Uh, it, it can be tricky. Uh, and even just sort of keeping track of where he'll end up can be tricky, uh, depending on uh, how complex the actual pattern ends up being. Like, so far, these have been pretty, pretty simple, but there are some more dense ones that can be a bit harder to figure out at a glance. Uh, and the Hadouken is good against him, but you only get one try unless you want to use a sub tank, which I don't think is worth it. He's weak to the shotgun ice, and he goes down pretty quick, so. As long as you're careful to dodge, make sure to kill his guys. Not too bad. Yeah, there we go. It's one of the four down so far. I love that song. This song, I guess. But, um... On to Sigma Stage 2. And I apologize if my, uh... Commentary is a bit... Just kind of matter-of-fact. I haven't, like, prepared anything to say. I'm just sort of winging it here like I did the first time. Um... Uh, but since it's been so long since I recorded that, I'm not in quite the same, like, headspace. I was actually surprised that I was able to talk for so long... Uh, without stopping. Like, I never ran out of anything to say. Uh, that, that might happen here, so I might be, there might be a little, little, little quiet bits sometimes. Uh, I also don't quite have as much energy as I did then. Uh, I'm a bit tired today. But I've just been chilling. Uh... Um, but yeah, uh, 2020 was hectic, obviously, and it's been pretty hectic for me since then. Bouncing between different things, uh, and I've always got, I don't know why, I just equipped Shotgun Ice to fight Chill Penguin. Uh, <laughs> but I guess uh, this is actually a good opportunity to mention the Japanese names of the Mavericks, because I mentioned a couple of them. Uh, I might as well mention them all as I go through them now. So, obviously, Boomer Kwanger is the same. I said that before. Uh, and Chill Penguin is Icy Pinguigo, which I love. Uh, but since I faced him first, this fight is actually a bit different because I have his weakness now. Uh, I don't actually think he's that much easier with his weakness than without it. Uh, the sort of flow of the fight is different because you're fighting with a short-range weapon. Uh, but it's it, it definitely... Eh, it's probably a bit easier, because it does do a lot more damage than a charge shot. Of course, you still have to dodge well. Uh, which I am not always doing here. Oof, that's kind of the hardest part to dodge, is when he's at sort of a weird distance. And he starts doing his uh, ice sculptures. Because you want to like get to the other side of him 
and sometimes that's easy, but sometimes it's a bit difficult, like there, where I just barely had enough space. Because if it's too high on the wall, then you try to boost, uh, dash jump off, you hit the ceiling and don't go as far. So it's a, it's a matter of, uh, like, reading the lay of the land and knowing what you can and can't do. But it's not too hard to uh, avoid taking too much damage. Uh, but yeah, also unlike the normal boss fights, is that you have to do them in a level. Like, the level doesn't end, you don't get a refill right after. So, uh, you need to be careful. In the levels do have checkpoints, obviously, but... Uh, if you take too much damage in one fight and don't get enough refills, then uh, the next two, the next fights can be hard. Uh, because there are several boss fights interspersed throughout a level, which is a, a thing that, like I said, the Mega Man series doesn't really tend to do. And it actually makes them harder than just uh, fighting them all in a single boss room. Because uh, usually you get a refill between them in the refights, but here we go. You might be able to guess who's next now that we're in an open area. And I'm gonna switch to Chameleon Sting. Now, there's another fight that's not really much easier with his weakness than without it. Which is why I tend to do him second. Uh, but, yeah. Storm Eagle. Called in Japan Storm Eagle. The names are really funny. <laughs> uh, his weakness is the Chameleon Sting. Uh, there's no charge shot to use against him, because the charge of the command thing just makes you invincible, which isn't exactly useful for hitting him, but, uh, basically, you can just sort of get into a pattern of dodging and shooting like this, and then when he comes out like that, shoot like that, and kill him. It's not too bad, uh, but it's not, but yeah, like Chill Penguin, it's not a huge difference from fighting with just the Buster. Although, I'm used to fighting him with the weakness with full upgrades. So I guess it's possible it might be a little harder, actually, and I just wouldn't know, because I'm more powerful when I face him with it. But I doubt that. It's just not as much a difference as some fights are. Which is pretty typical for the series. Some bosses are generally... Pretty much always, some bosses are a lot easier than others. There's another part that wouldn't be bad to use uh, Chameleon's thing on, especially to get a little more health than I have now. Uh, but now we're on to the boss of this level, which, if I can remember which one it is, I think I want this? Yes. No. No. No, no, no. Uh, I think I want Chameleon Sting. This guy is named... Rangda Bangda, I think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rangda Bangda. He switches between two states where either you're attacking the eyes or his nose. Uh, uh, uh he returns in a slightly different form in, um, oh, which one is it? Mega Man X 3? 5? I think it's one of those two. Uh, but he's not too bad. You just sort of go back and forth. Uh,. Uh, usually it's best to bounce off the walls to hit the eyes. Uh, thankfully, Chameleon Sting and uh, Rolling Shield are next to each other, so it's not too hard to switch back and forth between them. Uh, and then whichever one you kill first will change how the next act of acts. And you really want to kill the eyes first, because if you kill the nose first, then the wall will come in not quite this far. Uh, but it'll limit how much space you have on the sides. Ugh. I'm gonna go ahead and use a sub-tank. Uh, it'll limit how much space you have on the sides, and it makes it harder to kill the eyes. So it's really recommended to not kill the nose first. Of course, it's a little hard to tell, like, when you'll kill each part, because they're not segmented on the health bar or anything. But you can just kind of figure it out. But all right, two for two. There's not really much purpose to actually, like, remembering the password or in the Legacy Collection saving your password because uh, your progress through the Sigma stages, like the Hadouken, uh, isn't saved by passwords. Ooh, 
forgot about this song. I love this song. It's killer. I'm gonna try to be a little more careful so that I can maybe use the Hadoken against one of the bosses. So what I can do is hit these guys like this. It also helps refill one of my the one sub tank I used. Oh yeah, this one goes straight into the hardest fight to use the Hadoken against. So I probably won't even bother. Oh no no no, not the one I was expecting. Uh, with him, I still recommend using Electric Spark first. Oh, yeah, it's fine. It doesn't matter anyway. But yeah, like I said the first time, uh, the first time you hit Electric Spark, his armor breaks off, and it makes him vulnerable even while spinning. Uh, he also has, I think, at least an attack or two that he... Um, that he, you can only use if he has his armor. But honestly, I'm not sure because I always fight him with his weakness. But uh, Armored Armadillo, in Japanese, his name is Armor Armarge. And I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. But Armored, or sorry, Armor Armarge. A R M A R G E. Weird. But you might have noticed that we've now done, let me count, we did one boss refight in the first Sigma stage, and then we did two in the second Sigma stage, so I, and three, and then there's one right at the beginning of the third one here. So we're at four right now. Oh, nah, I can somehow without taking a hit. Which would have been good. This is a nice uh, grinding spot if you're careful. Because these guys respawn every time you go down there. So it's not a bad grinding spot. I don't really need to. But I might do a couple here. Because ideally I'd like to get... Oh. Back to full. Yeah. And then grab this one. So I can use it a little bit more effectively. So this should be our fifth refight. And yeah, this is the one I was expecting. This is the hardest to use the Hadoken against. Uh, Sting Chameleon, or uh, Sting Chameleo. This is Japanese name. Uh, he doesn't land on the ground very often. Because he'll immediately jump here. And he's really hard to hit with the Hadoken because he doesn't spend much time on the ground. And you can only use the Hadoken on the ground. Uh, unlike its equivalent in the next game, uh, you can't hit airborne enemies with the Hadoken unless uh, they're at the same elevation as you on a ground surface, if you know what I mean. And that, that that's another substantial downside to the Hadoken. Uh, you actually have to be pretty good to use the Hadoken uh, to its max efficacy. Uh, but so that's five now. Ah, oh, he's a... Uh, Pick, I think you're called Pikmen? Or Pickle Man? Something like that. Something similar. Some pun on uh, the fact that they use picks. Or at least the Mega Man 1 enemies that look like that are called that. I'm not sure what these uh, Mechanoroids. Is that what they're called? Mechanoloids. Mechanoloids, I think. Uh, that's the robots in the Mega Man X series that aren't sentient. Okay. The next fight. Already another one. Uh, and I will, I will try to use the Hadouken on him. Uh, he charges at you pretty quickly. But yeah, here's Sparkman Drill. Oh! I expect him to charge, but he jumped instead, so that, that messed me up there. Eh, it's fine. It's not like he's a hard fight with his weakness. Uh, but Sparkman Drill. His Japanese name is Sparkman Driller. Uh, which that one's the more obvious. Just sort of a variation on Mandrill. Uh, and him, if you hit him with the reflected spikes, if I can actually do it, it will freeze him. Just like the main shot will. I took more hits than I should have there against Spark Mandrill. Given the fact that he's the one that's like comically easy with his weakness. Yeah, 
Yeah, and like I said before, these guys, uh, if they suck you up, you can either shoot or jump to break them. Just be careful not to do it with a sub-weapon. Uh, be careful not to shoot to kill them with a sub-weapon, uh, because you will burn through ammo very quickly. Now you might be able to guess who this boss is, um, because there's water in the room. And you might ask, why would you equip the boomerang cutter for that? And it's because something interesting happens if you hit him with this, and I am going to sacrifice my chance to use the Hadouken, because I'm definitely going to get hit, to show this, but that's fine. Uh, you use the Boomerang Cutter on Launcher Oc Launch Octopus, whose Japanese name is Launcher Octopold. If you hit him with it a few times, his tentacles break off, and it makes him unable to use some of his moves. Uh, it doesn't even necessarily make him that much easier, because it means he uses his torpedoes a lot, which are usually the hits I usually the moves I get hit by, because uh, I have a hard time dodging them. But you can kind of just do this sort of jump strat I mentioned before. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I think it's really funny if you can cut off his arms. Uh, but yeah, they really throw the boss refights at you in this level. Because there's only one in the first, and then two in the next. And then, spoiler alert, the remaining five in this level. Uh, there's some stuff up here that you can get if you use Chameleon Sting. Uh, and then you can also just avoid all of this. And I don't have full health, so I'm not even sacrificing it this time. But uh, you can also use the Boomerang Cutter to do something to him. The Flame Mammoth, who has maybe my favorite Japanese name. His name is Burnin' Nomander. But I have no idea what that's based on. But, uh, yeah, he speaks to the... Uh... Storm Tornado, as I showed before. I don't know why that one's hard for me to remember now. Well, I think he looks really funny without his trunk. Uh, it's weird that only two of the bosses have things like that, and it takes the same weapon for both of them. It also froze there kind of weirdly. I was worried for a second. Uh, but so that's all five boss refights. Uh, so now all that's left is the actual boss of the level, whose name I don't remember, but this is the one I was thinking of for the second one. I always get the second and third bosses confused from the sequence stages. Uh, so I want the boomerang cutter for this too. Three fights in a row that I want the cutter for. Although for him, it's his actual weakness. It's not just fun me. Uh, I feel like this boss has some simple name, like dinosaur tank or something. But I think that's just a different boss I'm confusing the name with. He's pretty easy. You mostly just go back and forth. He will shoot that uh, green energy cannon. I didn't get a chance to. But he will shoot it, and I think you either need to jump over it, or you might be safe on the ground. Uh, but he goes, he goes down pretty quick using the boomerang cutter. And so that's that's all five boss refights, and three out of four Sigma stages done now. And I'm going to save again, even though there's... Not much reason to, but whatever. Uh, and then jump straight back in. Oof, it's foreboding music. I'll let you listen to it for a sec. Oh, sounds great. I know I interrupted it immediately by bringing this up, but uh, uh, what you want to do here, really, this is a great, this is the best grinding spot in the game, really. But of course it's in the last level, so... <laughs> it's not exactly useful for getting through the game, but it's useful for this part. And it's really helpful that it's here. So there's these uh, little enemies that spawn infinitely from these holes. They're actually the same enemies uh, from Sting Chameleon stage. Uh, and that, uh... Was it the... the... The woodpeckers spit at you, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, but once you fill up all four sub-tanks, like that, then you just want to go up. But you really want to fill them all. This is the hardest part of the game, I think. So I, I really recommend uh, getting up to full here. 
and then I recommend switching away for a chance to use the uh, Hadouken. <sighs> Finally, Sigma makes his appearance. He's very impressed with us. <laughs> but he's not willing to fight us just yet. He wants to test us by throwing his uh, dog companion at you. Oh, and I get hit immediately, of course. Usually I am able to kill him. In fact, I don't... Yeah, okay, he is weak to shotgun ice. I almost, I almost always use... Uh... Oh, God, I'm really not doing well. I almost always use shotgun ice against him. In fact, I'm not used to dodging his pattern because I almost always pull it off. Oh, God, dang. I'm gonna heal. I might be low enough that it won't fully heal. Nah, no, it did, just barely. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Uh, but uh, the dog's name is Velgarder, actually. Uh, I don't know if that's like a mistranslation of Vanguard or something. I'm not actually sure what that name is supposed to mean. But now he's impressed, so now we get the chance to fight the mighty Sigma, who has a lightsaber. Because of- oh, of course, I immediately get hit again. I'm sorry that I am not doing particularly great, but the strategy I always follow in this fight is basically this. Is you jump up here, wait, get one shot down like that, one shot there, and repeat. As long as you're up here, he will go up to you. And as long as you're all the way at the top, he can't actually hit you until he jumps around one, two, three, and four times. Uh, oh, five, actually, I think. I, I messed up the timing there a little bit. So you want to wait do that, but better. Do as I say, not as I do. And sometimes he will block it, uh, but he's weak to electric spark, and basically just rinse repeat. This part's not too bad. Uh, Velgard is a little crazy, but since I usually use the Hadouken, I don't really have much trouble with him. The second form, not too bad. It's a, if you follow that sort of tactic, it's a very consistent uh, strategy, so it, it works pretty well. And now for his final form, Wolf Sigma, who is immune to the Hadouken in this version. In the PSP version, they actually made him vulnerable to it, so he dies in one hit to it too. So if you're good, you can kill all three forms of the Hadouken, which is crazy. But this one's really hard to hit, uh, for reasons as you'll see. But he's weak to the rolling shield, and what you want to do is get up there, hit him, uh, but the only way you can hit with the Hadouken is to be on the hands. Oh, I got distracted and died. Uh, I'm gonna go one more time. If I die again, then I will, uh, I'll, I'll cut out it until I get back to him. Uh, but this might be another chance to show off the Hadouken. Uh, and it shouldn't take too long to restore my uh, sub tanks. So I apologize, but I, I think it's okay to show just one more attempt. Usually I don't fail like that. Usually I'm a little more cautious and use sub tanks more readily. I just wasn't paying enough attention there. No, oh, I got a life. That's cool. Not really very important right now. But there, sub tanks full and all my. Uh, weapons are full too. I don't actually recommend dropping the shield yet because there are more of them up there. This is a chance to get hit, but it's fine. And I don't actually rem I don't actually remember if I have to do the first two fights again. I think so. Yeah. Okay. I thought so. That's fair. Uh. So let's see if I can pull off the Hadouken this time. Yeah, there we go. Because usually I think he does jump over you there. I just, for some reason, wanted to move forward. And for this, I would recommend not doing what I did the first time and immediately jumping on the wall and try to time it on a return path. Like, let him jump up here. Oh, I missed. I went the wrong direction. That sucks. Ah, it's okay. This part's not bad. Especially if you can place your jumps correctly. Yeah, depending on where he is on the ground, exactly where he'll jump to could be a little different. But it's it's generally pretty consistent. 
Uh, just be careful and be ready to, like, change up a little bit if you see that he's gonna hit you. Of course, the fact that the health bars are... or your health bar and your energy bar are in the way is, uh, not ideal. But it's fine. It's not exactly hard to figure out where you are. Oh. Almost. There we go. Uh, now I don't have full health, but I'll try to pop a sub tank before I get low enough that it won't bring me quite up to full. Uh, well, I guess I can't use the uh, Hadoken anyway, so I don't know what I'm thinking with that. I'm just going to be cautious. You want to avoid being down on the ground as much as possible because his fire is hard to avoid. It's hard to avoid the lightning below his hands, and it's hard to avoid this attack as well. All of his attacks are pretty hard to avoid. God damn, man. Oh, uh, the easiest time to get up is when they come at you. You can jump on the walls, but it can be a bit dangerous. Uh, but usually you kind of have to. Oh, almost. Well, I don't know why I said almost. Oof. Oof. Yeah, I'm gonna use one more. Oof. Ooh. I'm not doing great here. This fight can be pretty tricky. His fire doesn't reach all the way to the sides, but his lightning balls do. Oof. So, uh, if at all possible, you more want to get hit... You more want to be on the ground when he uses fire than lightning. But, I believe he doesn't use the arm lightning while he's attacking with one of the other two. Oh. Okay, now I need to be careful here. Next hit, I need to swap. Like this. Oof. That was close. Uh, so I think I'm just a few hits away here. Yeah, just one more. There we go. Oh. I didn't even get that close to running out entirely, but it's easy to die because you didn't heal fast enough, so it still can be kind of stressful, especially when it's been a while. Oh. Oh, that was good, though. I have definitely done worse on that fight, and I've definitely done better on that fight, but it's fine. I'm glad I got to show the Hadoken on Velgarda. But so that's the end of Mega Man X1. The game's a lot sort of simpler, more straightforward than its sequels. Uh, and that has advantages and disadvantages, obviously. Um, but I find the game to be probably the most fun to replay of the whole series. Uh, just because it is so straightforward, there's not like any big barriers to playing again. Some of the later games have particularly difficult parts or mechanics uh, that can be kind of annoying to manage when you want to get 100%, uh, including some uh, things that if you mess them up, you have to reload a save to try again, which is really annoying. It makes the games just in general much more annoying to just jump into. But games like Mega Next 1, so simple. Just pop in, blitz through, or if you're like me, fail more than you should, but still, still do pretty good and have fun with it. I love Mega Man X1. I, I think it's a goddamn masterpiece, personally. Uh, I it's one of my favorite Super Nintendo games. It's one of my favorite Mega Man games. Uh, I, I tend to be pretty positive about games in general, uh, but there are three Mega Man X games that I would say are tied. I would give Mega Man X1, X4, and X8 all a 10 out of 10. Which doesn't necessarily mean they're entirely perfect. Uh, in my opinion, like a 10 out of 10 means that any issues the game might have don't take away from the overall experience. They don't, they don't detract from the fun of the game. And as far as I'm concerned, there's nothing in this game that I would complain about that would actually detract from me having fun. But that was fun. Uh... Oh, this is a great song too. Highway stage. It's called Central Highway. 
uh, Ocean Stage. I think they all, I think all the stages do have names. Although I'm not sure. I certainly don't know them all. Uh, in fact, I, if they do have names, I can't actually think of any of their names. But that was fun. Uh, I appreciate anyone who watches this. Uh, especially if they did see the first one first. Because, uh, certainly a very long wait. Yeah, Mole Borer. Weird name. So I guess that does mean that in Mega Man X7, it's Mole Bor that is the mini boss. Uh, but this is fun. Yeah, Bow Spider. You can see that. Rangabanga D Rex. Not Dinosaur, whatever. D Rex is his name. There you go. But, this has been fun. Chill Penguin. I see Pinguiga. I'm not gonna go through them all. That, that's sort of annoying to say again. I already said them all. Uh, but I enjoyed this. Uh, I need practice. Let's playing. But so I'm gonna move basically straight into X2 after this. Uh, I'm planning for this to go up tomorrow as I record it, which is uh, December 12th, 2022. Say the year, just in case. You never know. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then uh, my hope is for part one of X2 to go up on Wednesday, December 14th. I can add 2 to 12. Uh, and then I'm going to plan for videos to go up Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Uh, with maybe periodic clips going up as I've done. Uh since I made the first Mega Next video. Uh, but that's about all I got to say. Thanks for watching, uh, and I've had fun. Oh, wait, wait. Didn't quite finish the credits. Sorry. Uh, that's about all I have to say, but I'll let it go. I forgot about this part. Tatsunoko? I didn't realize that Tatsunoko worked in this. I guess just think of this as sort of like an after show. We can laugh at some of the the funny names like Elf. Uh Guchkoshi? Zofi? Professor F. Uh I think it's Konami that had a rule for a while that uh people weren't allowed to be credited by their actual names, which is crazy and kind of not okay. I don't know if Capcom had that too, but there's a lot of weird names that are clearly aliases. Oh, love the music in this game. But I think there's one little bit here, unless I'm forgetting. Do I need to press a button? I might need to press a button. Uh, I don't know. Oh, here we go. You've won a temporary victory, X. What you destroyed was only a temporary body. My spirit remains intact. Is that it? Yeah, oh, here's more. In time, I will find other bodies strong enough to do my bidding, and I will return. I shall see you soon, X. Very soon. Yes. Yes, indeed you will. It was kind of weird to end it by reading the last, uh, the tease for the next game, when I didn't read any of the other dialogue in the game. But, uh, whatever. Uh, unless I'm forgetting something that is actually the end, so. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later.